what are we up to today? Well, something that seems very popular on my channel, which is remote control repairs. I've done a few of these now, and um, mostly the usual things. Um, I'll leave the buttons in for this. This camera should be able to pick up on the flashes of infrared light. But you notice when I try to use the volume up and volume down and buttons, we get nothing, but every other key generally gets something. So the, um, I guess the diagnosis from that is probably that these buttons don't work or the pads are worn out. So we're gonna open this up and I have a kit of little sticky rubber carbonized pads that I can probably replace a couple of. So let's get this open. Now it is also late in the night, so I'm a bit husky in the voice. I'm gonna stop and take a drink. So we have these little sticky pads um, and we have some Loctite glue, some quality CA glues, cyanoacrylate or super glue, depending where you come from. Now I'm going to use my little spudger tool. This is a, one of a gift of several that um, Tinkerman Mick gave me. I'd check out his channel if you're interested. Um, he's uh, very, very useful in that regard. I used to hand over phone repair jobs to him. And he made a business out of it <laughs> and did quite successfully at that. I don't quite have the patience for phone repair, I have to admit. I could probably develop the skill to do it, but at the same time, things just change so rapidly. So, we're going to work our way around the clips. By the way, this is from a Pioneer uh, audio receiver, an, AD, an AXD7660. Although that's probably the part number for the remote. We'll see if we can get into this. Although, I'm going to find a tissue and I'll be right back. Alright, nasal malfunction averted. Alright, let's see if I can get into the bottom here. I'm trying to do this without messing up the remote and jabbing this thing through me. It can be a bit of a challenge, especially when these remotes have been around a while and there's a lot of bodily oils and junk stuck into this crevice in here. As you're probably seeing, some of this stuff out here is actually dead skin cells coming out. It's uh, why I use isopropyl alcohol when I'm doing this stuff. Oh, these are not the most hygienic of things. In fact, they're about as hygienic... Well, actually, toilet seat technically is more hygienic than these things. My desk keyboard, on the other hand, maybe not. The keyboard in your house has probably got to be one of the most... the least hygienic things in the house. Give me a moment and I'll be right back. All right, so I established here that uh, this is one of many rare remote, or one of very few remotes that actually has a screw in the back. And it's of such a small size that I need a special screwdriver. Um, probably this one. Most of these are just clamshells that snap together. This has a tiny little screw in here. So I'm pretty sure, let's stick it onto a magnet here, I'm pretty sure that this will accelerate my efforts to get this open. There we go. Some of these very soft plastics are fairly hard to avoid marking up. But I don't think they're going to mind too much as it will be functional, although I'll give it a little bit of a polish before I give it back to them. To get this end open. This has some really annoying snap clips in it that don't want to come undone. All right, here's our remote. Well, straight away I can say, see there's some liquid damage. There's also some track damage. I think this has been thrown. Um, so that becomes a more complicated repair. But it's also that the most um, moist keys here are definitely uh, definitely not the ones working so that is what is that that's the main <laughs> so that's the main supply to the LED at the top and if I look at this let's have a look over here all right can we get macro focus here or maybe not Give me a moment to change my focus. 
All right, hopefully this will work better. So this little piece here has got four tracks in it. I'm gonna to have to take a photo for this just to show them what needs to be done. Um, so yeah, that. So yeah, these two run through that and then way up to the top and all the way back down again. Wow, it does a full lap of the board. Um, so this could be a challenge to fix, but I guess I'll clean it up and take a look at the state of things and see what we can do. All right, so I've taken some photos as evidence because they might not like the idea that this is unrepairable. Some people don't. So I'm gonna take this out and I'm gonna give it actually just a dip in some very lightly soapy water, the warm water in the sink. In fact, I'm gonna take this whole lot and give it the soak. There's some rubber pads have come off in here too. Oh, they're plastic snap clips. That would make sense. Not this whole thing. I'm just going to dump the whole thing in warm soapy water. There's not really a lot that's going to be damaged in here, bar maybe that capacitor, and that is replaceable. Um, and that looks pretty well sealed. So as long as I don't dip it too deeply under there, we should be right. So let's go wash this off. All right, we're going to need us to get ourselves some light in here. Let's have a look. I've moved my angle around a little bit so that we can see better what's going on. Now I've got some options here. So let's trace these pins back a little bit. So that's our LED there. That's our two tracks here. Well, the thing was nearly gone, I reckon. Um, and that's half a button there. So let's see. Um, which button is that likely to be? guessing it's this one here that's our volume controls there that is going to be the end button on that row of four and that's going to be the ADV surround sound I don't think he's going to care too much about that he doesn't use that function so we might not prioritize that particular button which reduces one track that we've got to fill in um, so still there's four tracks to worry about, and this is a single-sided board. I don't have a lot of options or a lot of room to make adaptations to this board, um, mostly because that membrane's got to sit over everything. Oh, I could really try and solder these back on, but I don't like my chances. Or I could sacrifice that whole piece and find some really thin, fine wire to put over that, which might be my better option wow this is going to be a pain to try and fix and yeah I think the volume up and down buttons go through that section so that would explain why they're not working um, this is not going to be fun you can probably see the light back through the board here and um, try and get autofocus to hang on that spot so yeah um, I have to do a little bit of thinking about this and see what we can come up with all right, now, um, I found a better position for the camera and I changed lenses to the three times zoom. I found some jumper wire in the kit that came with my soldering iron. It's really, really fine stuff. I actually can't find the end of the wire. But uh, anyway, I'm going to try and use some of this to jump up over that gap there. Um, this hopefully shouldn't interfere with everything and should be quite adequate to do the job. I'm going to fire up my micro iron to give you an idea of this wire thickness parallel to the track here. So I think this should probably do the job. And I figure if I make some breaks or some, take the acid res or yes, the resist off the circuit board tracks in different places, I should be able to solder on without interfering with the adjacent track. These thin ones are going to be fun, but I'm going to turn on my micro iron and uh, get that one warmed up. And uh, where are we? SMD Rework Soldering Station. Turn this one on. All right, so I'm going to leave my camera in this position. Um, I don't know how I'm going to go about this bit. I'm thinking here, I'm probably just going to scrape that off. I'll need a little bit of blue tack to help keep things in position here. Just a little bit of that. Where are we? Can we see our area of interest? I'm probably just going to scrape this way, hopefully, so I don't strip any more tracks off than I need to. Yep, there's a good chunk of the 
fiberglass has come out there. So actually we might be able to scratch a bit of the resist off these ones and see how much we've got there. This might be a job for the microscope. I might be doing the rest on that. I'm not sure here. Um, the camera tends to be pretty distracting for these things for me. So thinking what I might do here is um, do a little bit of this off camera and we'll see what we can do. But I'll do the prep work now anyway. Um, you can probably hear me sighing because this is frustrating how much of a challenge this is going to be. Now I'm thinking what I'm going to do is I'm going to solder to one side here and then I'll put a drop of super glue on there and let it solidify before I attempt to move the tracks any further. I'm going to scrape some more of that acid resist off the end of that track. Alright. In fact, this little mini Phillips tends to be the best way to go about that. Alright, yep. So I think I'm going to take a knife blade, straighten all that out. Give me a few minutes to work on this and um, I'll come back and update you on where I'm at. Alright, I've been busy. So now let's hopefully our focus works relatively well here. Let's go over the repairs. So we have, and the focus is not going to work all that well. Can you autofocus? We might have to go out of lens. One moment. Alright, we've gone out of lens here. So we have our four tracks, one, two, three, and four connected. This is enameled wire. I did test it We're running across this gap, connected here, 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 and over here. Hopefully that's right. I'm leaving that one remaining track um, broken. I don't think it's going to cause a real issue. So um, hopefully this works. I've got some flux to clean off here, um, but I'll give the flux a bit of a clean off with some circuit board cleaner. And hopefully... Uh, the circuit board cleaner doesn't peel off this carbon track here. Um, and hopefully this works. It's a bit of a, um, a very tenuous repair and very careful. But if it does work, I'll probably put a bit of super glue on it to hold these bits of tracks together. But I've got to get this flux off first, so let's go do that. Um, in fact, I can do that right now. This stuff you've got to be careful with. Sometimes it can cause problems. Um... Is it going to peel it off? No. Looks good. Alright. Hopefully that's washed a bit off. And we'll be back in a moment. Now, a, uh, a little tip if you happen to be doing this yourself. Do not, whatever you do, put circuit board cleaner on these things. They will shrink up and peel up and roll up and never ever be the same again. Warm soapy water, maybe a bit of dish soap if you're really worried about it. Um, this is looking pretty clean. Um, as is the rest of the remote, actually. It's looking much cleaner than it did before. It'll look like new, hopefully. Um, but I'm going to show the bloke some photos of what his remote looked like on the inside and why it wasn't strictly working. I am nervous that this won't really work, but the way these are built, you really can't tell that you put them back together. Um, I could actually probably hook 3 volts up to that, but that, with my current supply setup, is probably just as easy to uh, to put it back together. So I'll let this dry off, we'll reassemble and see if we've had a success. Oh, I also forgot to mention that the wire I'm using is 0.1 millimeter. Um, this is on average the size that I was using when I do hearing aids. Um, and I actually have a, an example of some of that work. Let me grab that while we wait for this to dry. Now for that example we're going to go into my mini museum here and pry off the side and grab this little display out. I'll bring this guy over. Um, let's just bring a few things over on my desk here. We'll position my camera stand, swing you around and make everybody dizzy, and we'll put some lighting on. See if we can actually get an appropriate zoom level here. All right, I'm hoping this is the sort of the right zoom level to show you. Um, this is one of many little demonstration units I made. This is the top off a Bernafon hearing aid, and it has the battery door in the top here. Um, this is basically the amplifier module that would slot inside the ear mold. This gives you a little opening bit. This is the microphone here. 
uh, oh, sorry, that's the programming port. You would have the, a four pin plug that would go in there to program it. Microphone would hide there. This is a little switch for telephone and normal microphone mode. And you could open this and you can have a look in here. So this is, this here is the pneumatic earphone and this would go off to your, um, th this would go off to an ear mold if you had an over the ear type. This one is a uh, canal aid. Um, we have on the side here, the amplifier board, and we have telephone, a telecoil here, and um, a remote control coil. So I used to use an inductive remote control for these ones. Um, and I've got a microphone set off to the side here instead of inside the microphone port. Um, but this was just as a demonstration test unit. And this shows the solid core wire that I was working with that is actually a little bit bigger than 0.1 mil. But uh, it gives you an idea of some of the stuff I used to do in a previous job. So I made several of these um, and I made several other things as well. One that would actually, just as a proof of concept principle, would use a telephone coil um, with an inductive loop. So you could hook into a telephone line and inductively listen into that without interrupting the call. It was an interesting little project. Um, but anyway, let's put that back in the mini museum and move on. All right, so while we've been yakking, we can recycle our camera angle. And it looks like this is still got a little bit of flux on it. So we'll give that a bit of a clean and a bit of a scrub, um, maybe in some more soapy water, and we'll be back and uh, hopefully we can reassemble. All right, so it is reassembly time. I've given this board a bit more of a clean off, got the remaining flux off it. Now, I'm going to start with the bit that we need to do first, which is working out which way up all of this goes. So, yep correct way. You can always tell when my financial manager's got a headset on because you can hear her down the hallway. Although I think that this phone, the new S21 Ultra, is pretty good at actually picking the difference. I think it's got several microphones, so it does tend to filter the background out a little bit better. Alright, I think we've got all of that in place. Not quite, still got one there. Nothing like putting a remote back together and you find a button that's halfway in like that. Alright, so that is that way. That's the support for the LED. That drops into that there. Okay. Being gentle with these things is advantageous, I have found. Now we want those all to go into their respective slots and drop in like that. Now we can to snap the sides in like so all right i'm not going to put the screw in just yet i'm going to test it first let's find our batteries <laughs> i really hope this works all right let's see here what well, we have let's turn our overhead lights off um, up here and probably display lights okay let's try volume up no volume down no well, that button works. The one immediately above it works, that I thought wasn't going to, but those two don't. Left, right, up, down. All of that works, but the ones we were aiming for, volume up and volume down, do not work. Okay. This is where I need to do some homework, so I'm going to have to disassemble it again. So, uh, back to the drawing board. All right, so let's explain something I've tried here. I have lo I've taken one of these um, carbonized rubber pads that uh, I haven't got in the tweezers at the moment, and I've just sat it on top of the volume down button. I'm gonna push down on it, so that works. Let's go volume the si other side of that track. So I only need to activate one of them. Let's go volume up. So that works. Oh, and this one works too. So the volume up and volume down circuits work fine, so I don't need to mess with that. It could be that the carbon rubber pads have got problems. So I'm gonna strip the whole strip off the top here and lay it on top of the board and see if I can position it carefully um, to actually work over the spot. So let's try volume up. My apprentice is getting stroppy again. 
So there is definitely something wrong with those carbon pads. So I'm gonna look at that next and see what we can do about them. All right, so first thing I'm gonna try, um, these are the tracks or the pads we wanna work on. I'm gonna just try a bit of isopropyl alcohol on a Q-tip. I'm gonna give them a bit of a clean off. Hopefully it's just residue on there. If not, we might need to do some more drastic action, in which case we'd need to clean it with alcohol first anyway. I am getting a little bit of junk off here, but that's probably also some of the carbon off the pads as well. But that's all right. I may need to glue something to it. We'll see how we go. So let's lay this back over and see if we get anything. I should add that I've got the batteries in the bottom here, by the way. So, and there is a little bit of flux on the side of that rubber membrane. That's really uncomfortable. Let's turn our overhead lights off. See if we get any, oh, we got a little bit of something for a minute there. But not much. Oh, all right. I think it might be that I've got to cut up a couple of these little carbon pads and make some sticky bits over the top. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to get them cut and prepped and then I'll be back. All right. So I've got one of these pads out. This is the one I was using for testing. This is the biggest pads that there are in that kit. And uh, there are many. This is about five bucks worth, by the way. Very handy to have. So I'm going to try and basically cut a few strips off this of about the right width for those pads and then hopefully I should be able to stick these down this is something that is a little tricky to do with my dexterity these days all right so I probably need half of that length this is where I have to pick it up with tweezers and I'm using my Victrinox scissors because they're actually really nice refined scissors um, definitely well worth getting yourself a genuine Swiss Army knife. Um, let's see if I can get that one. That'll give us two. I need four of them. Those ones are probably a bit thicker than they need to be, but you know we'll, we'll, we'll deal with that. Cross that bridge when we get to it. All right. Switch this. Oh, I'm shaky tonight. I don't have the steady hands I used to. Look, these are not perfect, but they'll probably suffice for the job and I've got to stop talking too loudly because I'm blowing these around with my breath. All right, let's move them to the side. Now, I need to make myself a super glue applicator, which I'm gonna do by cutting the tip off a Q-tip. That gives me a nice little point that I can dip in the super glue. Be very controlled about where I place it. Now we are operating on high zoom at the moment, so we're going to have to try and be careful about how we do this. Um, normally I would make a little pool in a blister pack for super glue. I may have to just improvise a little differently this time. Let's get all our tools prepped before I get the super glue underway. I use my preference hand for the holding of the tip. I don't know if you guys can see what I'm about to do here. Let's get a bit on the tip here because you really only want to be using a very small amount of this just doing a bit at each end here all right I've probably got a bit of room to spread along those pads okay that's very nicely on there now comes the bit where you get nervous placing these things because you really only get one shot at this it's a little bit cockeyed but the way this remote works it probably won't matter too much you can tell I'm actually about a week out from my last infusion of Tysabri because I actually can do this stuff um, give me a couple of weeks and I'll be pretty useless again. All right, now we give this 
give them a bit of a press down to distribute the glue. Now, this is where we go away and you do not touch it for about 10 minutes. You just leave it alone. Um, exactly where it is. We'll be back and I'll put this phone on charge for a bit. All right, so it's assembly time and we've switched to a wide angle lens for this one. So I'm pretty confident that the glue on these ones has dried, or at least enough to do the job anyway. But you do want to be fairly careful when you position these, um, not to get it wrong. All right. In fact, we might even do this the recommended way and put these guys in the top first. Make sure they all fit through. Last thing we really want is misaligned keys because I will probably swear when I've got the camera running instead of turning it off to do the jobs that make me swear as I currently am. I'm keeping away from putting my finger on that. I don't really want to get it interrupted. So it looks like all our keys are in position. We can turn this bit over and hopefully drop that all down nice and squarely. Somewhere about there. Now, that should be about right. Now, let's take the normal button. Normal buttons. Volume up, volume down. Ha! <laughs> okay. So not only was it the normal problem, it was a circuit board problem as well. Now, there are some little wrinkles on here where I was a little forceful with the case. That happens, and these are fairly soft cases, so unless you try really, really hard, everybody's going to know the remote's been opened, but I think you'll be just happy that it works. So let's turn our overhead lights off again, uh, so we can see here, volume up, volume down, and it works very softly now, you don't have to put much pressure on it. All the other keys, I think we may have lost, that key is fine, that key is fine. I'm not sure which button we've lost. That one, I believe. And that's um, TV control up and down. We won't be using that. So this whole section here is not used in that receiver anyway. So I think we'll be pretty right. Anyway, so he'll be happy with that. So, thumbnail time. It's the remote control buttons that were the problem, the volume up and volume down. So I hope you found this interesting, um, also the other thing is don't lose the battery cover. Actually, you know what, this is a customer that, um, well, he's an old customer of mine, I'm not officially in business anymore, but I do fix the occasional thing for customers that are desperate. Um, he is such a nice bloke, I've got some brand new, some brand new batteries, um, and uh, he does actually insist on giving me a bit of money sometimes when I actually refuse normally. But because in that, to that end, I'm going to put some brand new batteries in here for him. So hopefully this works for the next few years. And these are, these are Energizer dry cells. And you put them in a remote because they're far less likely to leak. Um, and they have about a 10 year shelf life. So for a very low current application like this, much better than putting alkalines in here that will leak. Well, these are Energizer Max anyway, the same ones anyway. But these will last far longer before they leak. So um, in any case, I'm going to make sure that these work. Yep, they do work. All right. So I hope you enjoyed this. And um, yeah, we'll be back with something more interesting. I think I have a pretty cool, unusual thing coming up soon. I'm looking at it on my floor here, and I'm pretty sure it's an animal chip reader that's uh, in need of some NiCad battery replacements. It was a mystery donation that showed up in a box on my doorstep like a lot of things do from time to time. So, um, I can't help but feel, wow, I just hit autofocus and I'm having it keep track on this item. So, tracking autofocus, geez, that makes a difference. I'm still learning how this phone works, so if the footage is a little bit subpar, I'm sorry guys, um, I will get there eventually. Alright, so, um, yeah. Time to uh, to move on. So I hope you've had fun. Thumbs up. See you later.